हेलो गाइस वंस अगेन वेलकम टू द फॉरेंसिक ट्यूटर चैनल आई एम योर ऑनलाइन फॉरेंसिक ट्यूटर डॉक्टर भूपेश कुमार शर्मा एंड इन द लास्ट सीरीज इन द लास्ट लेसन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ फॉरेंसिक साइंस इंट्रोडक्शन टू फॉरेंसिक साइंस एंड द ब्रांचेज ऑफ फॉरेंसिक साइंस एंड दिस टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द क्राइम सीन इन्वेस्टिगेशन द बेसिक्स ऑफ क्राइम सीन इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड हाउ टू डॉक्यूमेंट द क्राइम सीन सो वैन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द क्राइम सीन द फर्स्ट थिंग विच कम्स इन अवर माइंड इज वट इज क्राइम सीन we usually define a crime scene is any place where the crime has been committed or where the crime has been occurred but how to know that this is the actual place where the crime has been committed so what we look for are the evidences so wherever we are going to encounter the evidences we consider that as a crime scene and that becomes the corpus delicti in the last slide also in the last series we have understood about the corpus delicti the body of crime so different parts of the crime scene we can identify them according to the uh, on the basis of the evidences encountered so if you look at the slide here that what do we mean by the crime scene you will be able to see it is the actual place where the crime has been committed so we will be only able to know because of the evidences if the majority of the evidences the major evidences are lying over there then we can look for such type of places and then we will say oh this is the crime scene the second thing is it is the actual place of occurrence scene of occurrence so with the help of the witnesses or the people or uh, the onlookers the viewers you will be knowing they will be witnessing or giving opinion or uh, giving their testimonies that that this is the place where they have seen the crime being occurred being an occurring then the place where the evidence is so this definition the last one goes very much uh, uh, so good about the crime scene uh, um, location as it is the place where the evidence related to a particular crime has been encountered so most of the time we look for the evidences and we look for uh, the major evidences and the minor evidences and on the basis of that we identify that what all parts are the the corpus delicti so as you can see on the slide there are different ways in which we can define we can classify the crime scene so first is on the basis of the location of the crime scene which is indoor outdoor and a combination of indoor and outdoor if it is a closed room no matter what is the size of the crime scene if it is a closed area closed area means the four walls and the roof it will be considered as an indoor crime scene so like a room like a garage or anything such like that it will be considered as indoor crime scene and then the outdoor crime scene like in open uh, open desert area open field or uh, uh, on the terrace or uh, like this this will be the com uh, the outdoor crime scene then thirdly it comes the combination of the indoor as well as the outdoor crime scene so let's suppose if the body has been uh, dragged the person has been killed in a room in a closed room and then the body has been dragged uh, in the car to the car and from the car has been dumped off outside area maybe in the desert or in river or any such forest area then this crime scene will be the combination of the indoor as well as the outdoor crime scene so the next category of the crime scene whether it is primary crime scene or secondary crime scene and how we will know about that how we will be knowing that whether it is primary or secondary crime scene on the basis of the evidences the majority of the evidences or the major evidences will be lying on the prime uh, the primary crime scene and the secondary crime scene will be having the minor evidences but most of the time what happens actually let's say if somebody has been killed in a room the same example i am taking back again somebody has been killed in a room taken into the car and then have been dumped off uh, in the outside area or the desert area anywhere so where is the secondary crime scene so our desert area is the secondary crime scene or maybe the tertiary crime scene our secondary crime scene is the car so desert area is the tertiary crime scene and how we came to know about the tertiary crime scene when we look at the body itself so we will be knowing what type of weapon have been used or what injuries have been caused or what poison has been given so we will came to know that this is not the actual crime scene because other evidences correlated to the body are not present on that crime scene so it is not the primary crime scene so we need to go ahead to finding out that which is the primary crime scene and we have to trace down till the so next come the crime scene on the basis of the size which is micro and macro crime scene micro and macro nothing have to do with the micro uh, micro traces evidences but actually it is just the size of the crime scene if the size of the crime scene is very small and complicated and you see 
all the majority of the evidence is lying in one small area then you can say it is a micro crime scene and if the area is very large like a desert area open field or anything like that then it becomes the macro crime scene the now coming to the role of the investigating officer or the forensic expert so this is a crucial thing the the beginners who are learning the forensic science for the first time uh, they have to know or it is this slide is also important for the investigating officers they have to know that what are their roles on the crime scene so first thing to identify whether the alleged crime scene is genuine or simulated what does that mean so there may be a case of homicide which had been shown as suicide there may be a case of suicide which had been shown as homicide or there may not be any crime actually happened but the crime has been staged or manipulated in such a way to show a crime scene i still remember i went to solve a case of theft where i found certain fingerprints and um, some jewelry was missing in that house and the owner of the house said that he is having the doubt on the maid the housemaid the house servant and then when i collected all the fingerprints what i found only the fingerprints of the house owner nothing else so what does it says it says the same thing that the crime has been staged by the house owner himself and no other crime has happened so whether the crime scene is genuine or fake we need to answer this question uh, firmly and very quickly otherwise we will be wasting our time during the investigation on a fake crime scene or on a simulator or staged crime scene the second thing is what were the routes of entrance and exit so as we know we all are human beings so if if you have to commit a crime so you are not going to commit a crime but i will take like examples so if you have to commit a crime you have to approach the crime scene uh, from certain area you will decide the point of entry and then also you will decide the point of exit so when we enter when a culprit enters to the crime scene so this is the side where majority of the evidence is impression evidence is like fingerprints if he try to open the door if he try to broke uh, the door or break the lock or, uh, or burglary forceful entry so whatever the site of the entry will be there most of the evidences are going to be lying uh, at the site of the entry and similarly at the site of the exit whether the site of the exit and entry are same or not if they are different then why they are different then you will see more of the evidences in case of the uh, site of the exit as well and it is also very crucial thing which decide whether the crime scene is uh, genuine or fake or whether it is homicide or suicide now i would like to give you a scenario here so you went to a crime scene you visited a crime scene and it is a suicidal hanging and you found the door locked from inside and all the window panes all the windows are intact they have not been touched at all so definitely you would like to say it is a case of suicide but if you found the door locked from inside the entrance is locked from inside and the window pane is broken then you probably say that there are chances that somebody has committed this as homicide and have been ran through uh, the window and if you found the door locked from outside then probably it is a homicide case so we have to check the route of entrance and exit because majority of the evidences will be lying over there the third thing is how did the criminal and the victim reach the scene why we need to answer this question because why this place why this particular place have been chosen so this is number one why uh, was it easy access for the criminal was it easy access for the victim or was it easy access for both of the entities the criminal and the victim or it is a remote area where nobody comes or is it easy to approach in this place or whether the victim is uh, every day reaching to this place why this area have been chosen so this is uh, the crucial question which have to be answered during the investigation itself by the investigating officer which will be helpful in the later stages of investigation the next thing is how many criminals and victims were involved now when we talk about how many criminals and victims we are taking the uh, the number of individuals on the crime scene and how we can note the individuals on the crime scene by looking at the different kinds of cigarette butts if there are number of cigarette butts so you can check all the saliva dna for all the cigarette butts it will give you an idea how many people were present at the time of uh, the crime on the crime scene then number of footprints number of fingerprints all these things are going to give you an idea of that how many uh, people were present on the crime scene 
or how many victims are there whether there is a single body two bodies or there is a blood which is not pertaining which is not relating to the current victim so there may be somebody else also who have been injured and he or she may be a victim or may be a suspect this can also be answered by looking at the evidences the next thing which is very very important thing is what was the modus operandi or the mode of operation the way of crime we need to answer the way of crime at any cost in the courtroom because the punishment can only be decided on the basis of the modus operandi that how the crime has been committed. The crime can be simply a murder or a rape but how it has been uh, committed or commissioned it is it decides the severity of the crime and accordingly the punishment will be announced by the honorable court of law. So we need to decide the modus operandi in all the cases then what evidence is that the criminal and the victim exchange it depends upon the Lockhart's principle of exchange as we discussed in the last lecture so whatever the evidences have been exchanged because you know the forensic science is the science of comparison it's solely based upon that what are the evidences we are looking for and this will link the evidence to the criminal to the crime scene and to the victim so we will be providing a link between all these three with this exchange of the matter or exchange of the evidences then when was the crime committed means the time of crime we need to identify there are various rules and regulations to identify the time of crime which we will talk later in our lecture series and then who were the criminals and the victims so identification of the criminals and identification of the victim sometime it happens the victim is actually the criminal and the criminal is actually the victim people i will give you a, a case of uh, like i gave you an example that there has been theft uh, a fake theft case so the victim himself was the criminal in such case so we need to clearly identify who is the criminal or who is the suspect and who all are the victims so by looking at the different evidences injuries whether they are real injuries or not or self-inflicted injuries are there mostly in cases of sexual assault where they are reported in the police most of the sexual result, uh, sexual assaults they may not be the truth cases uh, the women's may tear of their clothes or other things like that to blame somebody and can go to report the police officer so it is the victim himself or herself is a criminal just i gave you this one example there can be many other examples also so guys this was the short video on different types of crime scene and the role of the investigating officer furthermore we will be coming about the documentation of the crime scene in which we will include the crime scene photography crime scene sketching as well as the making notes thank you very much